back to coffee chat. No coffee today. This is the botanist gin made from Brucladic in uh, the Isles of Scotland. Um, in a warm, beautiful day here today. Uh, so that's one reason why the, the change in beverage. And the second one is bad news for us. Um, I've been needing to order beans uh, for my coffee guy all week. And I was gonna do it every day and I forgot. And then I got an email from him yesterday. I saw, as soon as I saw the, the who the email's from, I'm like, oh, let me go in and order it. And it was him announcing that they're gone for two weeks. <sighs> Sad news. Anyway, cheers. So we'll see where today's conversation goes. It's meant to be about airline travel. Uh, that's what I wanna uh, stick to it. Um, and it's gonna be, maybe all the other ones have been the same, but just kind of the grumpy old man, like, get over yourself, what's your problem? Anyway, um, kind of the where the the first uh, inkling I had of having a conversation about this happened some time ago, and then something I saw today was just like, okay, this is getting nuts. So the first one was a football player who seemed very cool um, that I know nothing about him but watch some of his posts and he just talks about kind of like what his day is like and what his life is like um makes jokes all the time that his wife makes more money than he does so she didn't marry him for the money it was reverse anyway this seemed like very down to earth but then he made this post about saying that anybody that's over six feet two or three or something like that should get a free upgrade to the seats with the more leg room because it's such a challenge physically for them to sit on a plane. And it was interesting because there's a mixture of the responses to this were either people that were tall or had husbands that were tall or boyfriend, I get this, it hurts, yes we should. You know, it's not our fault that they make the, the seats small, this and that versus everybody else, especially since he's a football player, saying, uh, you got more than enough money to fly first class, stop complaining. But I think his point was for people of over average height in general, uh, just to, to be made more comfortable so they're not suffering on the plane. And then my reaction though, is that flying isn't a right. It's a way to get around and yes in today's day and age it's like much more commonplace and maybe not today but at a time price it had dropped so far that you know a huge number of people can afford to fly certainly still not everybody so there are people that can't afford to you know buy plane tickets especially if they've got a family of multiple people and it's just much less expensive for them to drive and pay for hotels or you know drive overnight or what have you um or especially like uh going overseas europe and stuff like that you know that's not a gimme the those flights are always kind of expensive so to act like they should somebody should be catered to because they're uncomfortable on something that isn't a right for anybody to have in the first place seems a little bit odd to me I certainly get it I'm not a small guy and so I could say the same thing but that that was the difference made right is that people tend to have more control over their weight size versus their height the height that they have no choice and it's like well that's true but you also don't have to fly remember John Madden hated to fly and he'd take his bus everywhere right you can take trains you can drive and all this to say so to say that well I'd chosen to take an airplane flight and because I'm tall I should get a free upgrade because I'm uncomfortable come on man so then the, the other thing I saw today was apparently some pressure by the FAA on airlines to take from my understanding, all reasonable steps to allow families to sit together. Now, again, it depends on the circumstances. And I don't want to be like, and I get that there are times when extenuating circumstances or things outside of your control. There was a time where we were traveling, um, I believe it was 
us and my parents and somehow when we had our tickets we had our seats reserved all together they changed flights actual planes on us I believe and then shuffled around everybody so the kids weren't even sitting with us and I think my dad went up and <clears throat> You know complain to whoever and then they did shuffle us around and i've seen that many times when something's happened and we said people go to the flight attendants and say hey my kid's back there i'm here whatever and I, I have seen them do whatever they possibly can to get families to sit together so one i don't think that it's been unreasonable to this point um and again it depends on the circumstances what i have seen or read stories of is people that you know the the a lot of airlines want to nickel and dime now so you can get a ticket that doesn't allow seat reservations because it's cheaper and if you pay more money then you get cheap reserve uh, seat reservations again you don't have a right to fly on a plane and so you choose to fly on a plane and don't pay for your reservations and then get assigned seats and then complain that you're not sitting with your kids come on man you, you know, that's the choice you made. And I'm not going to, and I, I, this might, I don't know, a lot of people might not agree with my opinions and things like that. Because I can already hear, well, geez, they had to get to a funeral and this was the only way. And it's like, you know what, people had all these events before plane travel was cheap enough for most people to afford it and, and all this. So yes, that's a preferred method. It's the quickest method and all of this. But also... We're also talking about exceptions. I think that um, many times it might not be the full story that they just want the cheapest thing and then they complain that they're not sitting with their kids and expect people to cater to them. That's BS. You know, if you want to be guaranteed, if you reserve and there's still seats available and you chose, choose not to reserve yours, well then, psst, you know, come on. And no, I don't think kids should have to be separated from their parents, but I also read stories where entire families expect to be sat together. I could see one parent moved around or whatever to sit with the kids. You don't have to have your entire family all together. Again, this is just transportation. You're getting from one place to another. So one parent is sitting five rows behind and one parent is with the kids. You can deal with that. People shouldn't be put out of their way so that you get your preferred seating. Uh, when maybe you didn't take the steps that you could. Now, some of the stuff I kind of, I can kind of agree with. Uh, they're talking about um, like things like Southwest where there's not reserved seating. Although I think can't, Southwest, can't you? I've never, I don't prefer. I've never, or I haven't flown Southwest for probably 20 years. So I don't know how it is. I thought you could pay extra with Southwest and either get early boarding which if I had a family again I would do so that I'd have more of a chance of all sitting together or um, pay extra for reserve seating so that's not the case and you can pay for early boarding well there you go you're traveling with a family with kids or four or five people or whatever it is and you want to sit together then there's your solution don't skip the extra money be in the last boarding group and then stand in the aisle like hey you know, what, where's our seats? Who's gonna move so we can all sit together? Nobody, sit down, get to where you're going, enjoy your vacation. Grumpy old man, huh? In fact, we're doing it. We just bought tickets um, last minute for us. We buy tickets. We've got a uh, uh, spring break trip already planned and already have tickets, uh, one of the directions on that, because we look ahead. We don't always plan ahead, so we just bought tickets uh, for, for two weeks from now, three weeks from now, which is pretty short notice for us. And there's four of us going, and there were not four seats together. So we're doing two in one place and two towards the back of the plane. But yeah, we'd all prefer to sit together, be able to chat through the flight, but ain't going to kill us. We'll get there. We'll have our vacation. We're not going to get on there and stand in the aisle and say, hey, my seats are back there, but my family's up here. Can we uh, ask somebody to move? Nick? Come on, man. By the way, this is this is pretty good stuff. Jen is interesting. Um, 
it's funny by now if you're complaining about airline flight uh <laughs> anybody interested in just hearing about what i'm drinking probably already tuned out um but i hadn't had it until pretty recently because i'm into scotch i bought i bought this one since it's made from a scotch distillery um but you got to be in the right mood for it and just for some reason it's just hitting right today but we had a cocktail on the last cruise we went with um hendrix gin it's hendrix gin i believe it was that that he said has kind of a lemon note to it and then they muddled uh, more lemon basil rosemary i don't remember what else with it and then of course strained it out it was delicious um so i think my wife's gonna try that at some point we have to we have to get all that stuff anyway the the other thing that's been driving me bonkers and so on the last trip that we all took there was a gentleman although he really wasn't standing in the aisle for a very long time during boarding backing up the entire jetway for i don't know how long rearranging other people's luggage to try to get his bag up above exactly where he was seated and finally after way too long the flight attendant came up and was like sir there's no you got to put it back here and i thought she meant way at the back of planes like hey no i've got a connection i'm flying to europe somewhere i got to be able to grab it and get off this went on and on and on and kudos to her she wasn't moving anybody else's bag to accommodate this guy um in the end he went and put it back there. It was like four rows back. After inconveniencing, at this point, it had to have been over 100 people. People, It was a big enough plane. It had two aisles, and people were going around to the far aisle just to be able to sit down, holding up this entire plane of folks uh, over his importance. Then what happens? <clears throat> we get there. And I expected that he's so worried he's going to pop up, be one of those pop up, grab the bag, be standing at the door. No, he's just sitting there chatting with other people. I think we might even pass him on the way out while he's sitting in his chair. Unbelievable. But that whole carry on bag thing, that drives me nuts too. That they, you know, they have had for a long time those metal things little metal boxes right that your bag must fit in this to be a carry-on and then you see people carrying on you know almost small steamer trunks at this point you see pretty big duffel bags you could see people look like they're backpacking europe with these you know they're not that big around but they're like four and a half feet long uh major backpacks full of things and all this stuff and nobody enforces this stuff and then people are getting on near the end looking around and everything's full and you got like you know nice made up little old lady in the fifth row that has her son hat up in the, the overhead storage and the businessman who not only put his big huge roller on up there but his you know leather attache up there so they don't enforce any of this stuff and then people are having to check their bags at the end when okay for usually we have free check bags so i've gotten to the point where i'll take the weight at baggage claim so that i have almost nothing to carry on and i've reduced it down to now i feel like a, a seasoned traveler i used to respect those guys the guys that would roll people not just guys people that would roll on there with like nothing or a small little handheld something and now that's what i have is a little pouch it's got charging cords and earbuds and uh you know an extra phone if i'm bringing my work phone and some cash and you know stuff like that but that's all i have is this little handheld pouch and i check a bag yeah it's it's free but even if it's not free we check bags almost always um even if we have to pay the 25 bucks or whatever just to not deal with this kind of stuff and again yes okay you can save money and all that stuff but again if you're going to carry on 
they ought to enforce the size thing and enforce the one bag there and then because it, it seems unfair you feel bad for the the people coming on at the end that do have small bags that are appropriate size but then everything's been filled up by these gargantuan things it ain't right so i guess the last complaint i have i think is about going through security and people just not paying freaking attention and what what the explanation has been is that people that just aren't experienced with the process not understanding what they need to do and be prepared and i'm talking about you know you get up to the to the tsa guy that's checking your id and tickets and your id isn't out of your wallet yet and you see people going through whatever and then you get to the to the where you put all your stuff in the the, the plastic buckets or whatever and then somebody has all their stuff ready and somebody said well do you have any laptops in there oh yes and then so you're sitting there waiting for them to take out their laptops when there's been a big sign saying take out all electronics bigger than a phone or whatever or the sir you have to take your shoes off or hey you can't come through here to your belts off or what have you and that's fine i can understand if you if it you haven't been through security since 9-11 or ever but you're not blind unless you're blind if you're blind you're forgiven everybody is not blind look around see what everybody's doing be prepared you see everybody else pulling their computers out of their bags and putting them separately they're not doing that because they want extra security screening they're doing that because that's what you're supposed to do they're not taking their shoes off to air out their toes. They're doing that because that's what you're supposed to do. Me. What do we do? I have the tickets for everybody in our group. Those that need ID on top of their tickets. So when we get to the guy, boom, there's one. Boom, there's one. We're going somewhere where we need passports. The passports are all opened up to the photo page, all nested within each other. She so just open it up, hand it to them, slide, slide, slide. They're all there. How hard is that to do? Think ahead just 30 seconds. Anyway, safe, happy travels to you all. See you next time.